Hey, yeah. I said I wasn't going to treat you to any more videos of me um, transferring paint to dropper bottles, and um, I'm not. Because I'm done. On to some buildings. Oh, this is going to take a while. No wine tonight. Sad times. So we've got some uh, nice progress in on the building so far. Um, I'm trying to do sort of like a slightly marbled um, effect with the green um, and then countering that with a nice uh, sort of brassy um, sort of finish. I'm going to put some of the nihilac oxide in there um, just to show that that's, um, that's sort of properly weathered and then probably just sponge on some silver around the, uh, the very edges to, um, to pick out some sort of worn elements. Um, I just wanted to sort of touch on these um, uh, mouldings um, on the buildings. Um, it's going to be a pain to paint them all, but um, I uh, I can't just sort of dry brush them and leave them like that. Um, that's not me. Um, so lots of work still to go, but it should look pretty uh, pretty striking when it's uh, finished and on the table. Um, like that. Um, still got to decide on what I'm going to do for the um, is it the, the flooring. Um, not sure whether to go for a grey, um, sort of just a sponged on, um, sort of grey dry brush effectively um, over that just to pick out the edges and uh, um, get it done quickly. Um, that's probably going to be um, the best option. Um, just paint some uh, some sort of silver um, silver detailing in on these uh, hatches. Maybe some little bits of brass in uh, in these sort of vent areas. Um, I'm not going to bother doing the rivets. Um, part of me wishes that I've got the uh, enthusiasm to do that, but I haven't. Um, I'm not sure I know anyone that would. Um, but you know, it's progressing. Um, I ordered some snow effect um, this morning as well, essentially sort of fake snow for um, Christmas decorations. Um, I've got a, a snow map from Club, um, a nice world sort of thing, so I'm... Uh... Hello again. Uh, it's now Wednesday night. Um, finally finished putting all the paints in the dropper bottles, so I thought I probably ought to get on and use them. Um, so I'm currently working off some palette paper with some water to thin the paints down. Um, I've got a proper wet palette on the way. Um, working on my Judicia at the moment. Um, I've done a little bit of conversion works to this guy. Um, so the first thing that I thought was I didn't like the idea of him holding the, um, the temper mortise in his hand. Um, so I did a few little conversion um, little kitbashy bits and bobs. So I've got the hand there with the chain around it and um, the original um, crusade icon on the end of the chain. Um, found a piece of chain in my bits box, um, pinned the hourglass itself to one of the old armorium cherubs from the old Devastator kit and then um, just sort of uh, drilled a nice big hole um, into its neck, through its head, probably nothing more damaging than they did making it a cherub in the first place. Um, stuck the chain in around there. There's a little bit of um, stuff around there anyway that uh, I can sort of paint it and blend it into. Um, so I'm going to paint that up. And um, once that's done, I'm also get to focus. Just going to stick a magnet in the back of the hand there, so that when I want to use it, I can just magnetise it on. Um, probably what I'm going to do in most of my games is actually use this instead, um, which is off the Reva kit. Uh, again, magnetised, so um, when I don't want to use it, um, I can pop it off. Just drill a hole in the hand there, another one in the arm, and on we go. Um, also got some, didn't like the original head. Um, so I've got a, an old Crusader helm uh, from 
I don't know which Space Marine kit, but one of them. Um, now I'm sort of painting up in a bone colour. Uh, and then the last bit, um, I am denied over leaving the sword as it was. Um, I even did a load of research into um, uh, flat-ended swords like that. Turns out that they are an executioner's weapon. Hence why they don't need the point, because they're never going to be used to actually stab someone. They're always used for beheading. Um, but they weren't in vogue for very long. Um, and I've seen a couple of conversions where people have sort of um, shaved down the blade and, and done something different. And I think it just looks better, in my opinion. Uh, I'm not going to criticise the sculptor or the guys that came up with the idea. Brilliant idea. Yeah, it does, I think it does still look very cool. Um, but for me and for my chapter, um, the idea that he's sort of also a master swordsman, duelist, that type of thing works better. Hence why not only has he got the big blade, he also carries a knife. Uh, sort of a dueling dagger. Um, so I painted him up in bone coloured robes. Um, the armour is going to largely stay the same. I've started putting some highlights on. Uh, I think I'm going to do silver trim on this one rather than gold to make him look um, sort of a bit more... Um, a bit less ostentatious and um, the idea is he's sort of supposed to be a humble guy leading the uh, the rest of the uh, the warriors in battle through his deeds um, hence why the normal helm has um, like a mask over the mouthpiece um, uh, so yeah I didn't think he'd be all blinged up in gold like a chaplain so um, we're going to do this one in silver um, once I've got the main shading down on the robes uh, next bit is the chapter symbol um, and as you can see that's what I've got all of this little lot down for um, if I can just show you the current chapter symbol I'm working on I do have um, have an image worked up um, ready for sort of, uh, transposing onto some water slide transfers so when that when I get around to doing that, this is all going to get overdone. Um, but at the moment, um, we've got basically, it's sort of a cross between the Imperial Eagle and um, the Raven Guard. Uh, Raven, um, fairly straightforward to do. Um, it's a straight line down the middle, um, a bit of a crescent, and then four lines on either side just highlighted. But... Um, certainly for the character models like this, you can see the orange here, I like to highlight it up from almost black to very extreme light highlights. Um, I just think it gives it the model a bit more pop on the table. Um, so, uh, yeah, six layers. Um, well, I'm going to be having fun. Um, catch you a bit later. Well, that's that for tonight. Later than it should be. Work tomorrow. Yeah. Lots of work done on this guy tonight, though. Really pleased with how far he's come along. Um, just got the last layer of highlights to do on the robe. You can see I've added some more, um, uh, some more shading and highlighting, edge highlighting onto um, the armor. Um, this is a bit of dark reaper. Thunderhawk Blue, um, the final edge highlight with Finn Rizzi and Grey. Um, you can see I've um, just detailed up the eyes, uh, give them a bit of a glow as well. Same sort of orange, um, just to tie through to the orange on the rest of the army. Um, chapter badge done. Shoulder pad sort of shaded just where uh, we'll be getting some bright patches. Um, Studs on the robes, yep, they're all done. Don't know if you can see if it's going to focus, probably not, but uh, rosary beads. They're all done and just need a bit of gloss varnish now. Um, really pleased with the effect on the power sword. Um, I'll follow a um, Darren Latham tutorial for that um, up on his YouTube channel. Um, really nice and simple to follow. Um, it's all done real time, so you can see all the steps, all the um, to the transitions. Um, this is broadly similar to what I did on Captain Dark's power sword, um, albeit not quite 
um, not quite as detailed there's probably I could do with adding a few more bits onto this just to sort of smooth those transitions across um, I did do a bit of um, bit of glazing on the backpack there as well just to try and pick up some light from this sort of angle um, round on the back um, not much really on the backpack um, there are some edge highlights on there it's a bit dark in here at the moment so it's not quite picking up as nicely as I would like and then the lettering on the power sword um, that took a while um, just thinned down my fist and red um, apply it very very carefully um, so yeah probably another evening's work and this guy should be about there then obviously I've got to do something with his base um, thankfully the push fit models just pop out so all I'll do is just paint a quick outline of his boots um, on the base um, I actually use um, sort of effectively a super glue to uh, to base my models up um, it's not super glue it's just very very quick drying it's very similar sort of stuff um, with a bit of sand um, I'll pick out some bits of rubble some old bits of sprue or something to put on there as well um, just uh, grab a few pieces out my bits box just to make it look a bit more interesting and um, what I tend to do with the the knife blades actually as well is um, paint the um, the flat surface here not the bladed surface but the bit at the back and I paint that black as if it's been dulled down with sort of a, a carbon um, to stop it glinting then just have the silver on the cutting edge um, make it look as if he's trying to be a little bit sneaky I know it sort of counteracts with the bright orange trim around the shoulder pad but um, never mind you know um, not everything has to be realistic does it um, so yeah that's uh, that's coming on nicely um, the other guy we're working on after that will be uh, Lieutenant Kel, um, he's going to go with the blade guy. I mean, I've, I've got quite a bit of stuff done with him already, um, but the slog is still to do. Um, the administratum grey layer on the legs, you can see I've done it on the shield already. Um, it's a real faff, it takes forever, um, and it usually takes a couple of coats to cover properly as well. Um, I'll do that as well on the gun just here and um, the coils there are going to be um, they'll be layered right up to sort of a really bright uh, yellow um, I'll probably put some orange glow on his eyes not sure yet most of my guys have black eye lenses um, the blade guard because they will have black helmets has got an orange glow um, and obviously I've done the orange glow on the judiciary as well because otherwise there's not much orange on him at all um, uh, because he doesn't have a shoulder pad on this arm um, I've, uh, I've sort of wanted to add a little bit more orange to the model just to keep it balanced but I think he's looking really striking at the minute really pleased with how he's coming out um, so I just want to sort of brighten up that cloak a little bit more um, I put a seraphim sepia wash over it um, uh, as well as the agrax earth shade and um, sort of uh, as Andrew Dust for the base layer, then Agrax, um, then I laid it up with um, Yushabti Bone and Screaming Skull. Um, and then I actually washed it down with sepia again because I thought it was looking um, quite pale, but the sepia wash has taken it down a bit further than I wanted, so I'm going to put some, I'm going to go back with Yushabti Bone and Screaming Skull and put some nice pale highlights on there, mainly to tie in with the helmet because um, otherwise the robe and the helmet don't really match um, and uh, whilst I'm not sort of um, not to the extent of feeling like they have to be exactly the same tone um, I, I do want them a bit closer than they are at the moment um, but I'm really pleased with this guy so far I think the blue edge highlights on the black armour look really striking um, yeah yeah quite pleased um, so hopefully uh, next time and next time I speak to you this will be um, on the way towards being done if not finished well I say finished I won't have done the base um, models aren't finished till they're based 
um, but we'll certainly be getting there. Hello, it's now Thursday night. Managed to get some more done on the um, Judicia at lunchtime today. Uh, he's picked up a bit of a scratch on his hand, so I just need to touch that up. But he's otherwise done. Some nice shading on the, the top of the backpack there. Nice glow on the eyes. And I've just managed to change the tone of that cape. Um, so it's a bit paler, a bit more in keeping with the helmet. Uh, and then I've just picked out some details on the purity seals, got some script work in uh, and so on. Um, so having done that, I found this little sculpted base in my bits box so I'm going to pop him on there give him a bit more uh, a bit more of a character uh, make him a bit more of a centerpiece um, so I just got some black paint drying on there um, I haven't got any spray at the minute so a couple of layers of a bad and black should um, should see that sorted um, but the main body of work tonight is going to be Lieutenant Cal um, happy with the, the cape and um, all the orange details at the minute, so um, need to get all this armour layered up. I did do a little bit of lunchtime today, just on the gun and this uh, this left leg, um, or his left leg, um, but still a bit more to do on there. There's some touch-ups in the cracks there. His right leg still needs doing in its entirety. Um, these knee pads will go blue, um, same blue as the rest of the, the body up here. Um, we'll get some uh, some detail on the skull on his face on the back of the shield here um, and get some highlights put in and hopefully bring this Volkite uh, or Neo Volkite should I say and get that um, popping a bit more as well um, probably in a yellow to contrast a little bit with the orange um, but keep with the same uh, the same sort of colour palette and tone um, and I need to get some figure out what I'm going to put on uh, on the shield um, uh, death of the heretics, something like that. It's probably a bit small for that, but um, yeah. So, um, hopefully, catch you later. So, base finished, ready for the battlefield. I had a report from a mate actually this evening. Um, Uses the issue for the first time. Uh, smashed a shot from Dragster in uh, in one turn on the charge. So uh, quite looking forward to getting him on the field and getting him used. I think my first game he'll be used against will be Tau. Um, it's not going to be a, a battle report because my opponent's some um, army won't be painted. He's uh, just in the process of building it at the moment. But um, I'll uh, I'll certainly let you know how we get on and how the how uh, he does. Uh, in the meantime, after doing that, I got started on the lieutenant. Um, well, I say I got started, I already started him. Um, start doing some more work. I've got all the grey done and highlighted. All the Thunderhawk blue is done and highlighted. Um, so now we're on to details. I've started on the purity seals, um, some of the skulls, um, some of the uh, Eager-eyed and keen-eyed amongst you might notice there's some um, something missing on the top. If it won't focus, there we go. Yeah, I dropped him. Um, dropped him while he was attached to the paint handle, and of course it landed on the um, halo on the backpack, which snapped. Uh, but never mind. Um, it's a bit of an odd detail. Uh, anyway, I know it uh, sort of matches the blade guard, uh, what have you, but. Um, don't think it really suffers too much for uh, for not having it there on top. Start to do some um, OSL on the uh, the Neo Volkite as well. Um, just wanted the coils to look hot and the rest of it to uh, uh, to sort of have that sort of dull red. So um, I've got some yellow glow on the weapon. I'm going to add um, some darker colours to that um, as we go along, just to stop it looking a bit uh, insipid like it does at the moment. Um, then I've got to think of something to do on the tilting shield. Never ends, does it? Um, in the meantime, 
um, something else that I did mainly because I put a bit too much paint on the palette. Um, started on the assault intercessors. Um, so that's a bit of Dark Reaper just splattered um, over as the base coat on the, the top part. Uh, we'll get the ground next. Um, can't wait to uh, to get these guys done and on the table. Uh, I've been waiting for some uh, Primaris Assault Troops for ever since they came out really. Um, I, uh, I like my Assault Units. Um, and I was never really convinced by aggressors as an assault unit and Primaris are, uh, sorry, Reavers are, um, well, still pretty pants by, uh, by all accounts. Some um, the knives haven't got any AP uh, in the new book, which was what they really needed. Um, I see the pistols have gone up to minus two, which they didn't need. Um, but um, knives are staying the same at zero AP, so. Never mind, I'm sure we'll find some way of making them work. Um, I'll uh, do another video tomorrow night with uh, any more updates and then I'll, um, I'll try and get this one uploaded over the weekend. Um, and I still keep meaning to get around to doing those videos on um, my upcoming Crusade games. They're happening on Tuesday, so I'll need to do that at some point over the weekend. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll get those up uh, early next week as well. See you next one. Hello people of YouTube. It's uh, Friday night now. Um, Friday's always a time to... Uh, well, Friday night's always been playtime. And uh, I got a new toy through the post yesterday. Um, instant snow powder. So the plan is that I'm going to use this um, on the gaming mats. Hello. Gaming mat here. Get some uh, lovely buildings on, and then go sprinkling snow powder on them, just for that atmospheric effect. Here's some I made earlier. Should look really cool, I think, when it's all ready and done. Um, now the downside is that, as far as I can tell from um, sort of the information on the packaging um, it uh, it's not going to stay um, forever it says once it's hydrated it can retain the water for days or even weeks depending on conditions um, so I've made up um, quite a chunk in here I don't think I want to use more than that on a table's worth there's quite a lot in there I mean that's a two litre ice cream tub um, it's probably a third full at least um, from just three small scoops um, the packet's got about 20 scoops worth in and that was I think six pounds um, so um, yeah it should last for uh, certainly long enough to um, to decorate the table for a game I'm going to get the lid on that so that it doesn't um, no water escapes out of it um, as you can see it uh, moves quite nicely um, uh, so um, it's a uh, it's bizarre feeling stuff certainly uh, but we'll get that on the table and um, get it hoovered up when I'm done or swept up and then Hoover the last little bits up. Uh, it does leave a little bit of residue in your hands when you're done, but um, it's not too bad. Um, and should certainly make it look quite cool and wintry. Um, so that's me for now. I might do another log later, depending on whether or not I get to do any painting um, this evening. Um, Friday nights are always a bit of a bit of a squeeze time-wise because it's um, kids' film night. Uh, so the wife and I don't get to eat until they've gone to bed so um, if I do it's probably going to be quite late and I may not bother with a, a log um, uh, while I'm doing it if I do get to do something it'll probably be the lieutenant uh, from the Indomitus box that I'm working on um, uh, that and sort of 
touching up the bit of the judiciary that I missed yesterday and didn't notice until I'd take my finished photographs, which is uh, about typical really, isn't it? Uh, anyway, catch you later.